Hi there. In this video, we're going to walk through how you can use the outputs from your custom actions. You can see here in this example, I'm setting up a custom action that's going to look up the current weather for an area. So you can see I've got my base URL already set up, as well as a query parameter that's got my API key. Now I'm going to create an input that's going to take the postal code uh, for the area that I want to look up the weather. So I'm going to call this postal code, and then I'll give it an example value. And I click done here. And now the way that this API works is that there's not anything in the body, uh, but the we've got another query parameter um, that's going to have the uh, lookup for the postal code. So the name of this parameter is just Q. And then for the value, I will use the input of postal code. So I can click done and I can run the test request to set up the outputs. And you can see here that the test was successful. And you can see that we've detected a lot of data that this API goes back. Uh, everything from specifics about the area that I looked up, its latitude and longitude, its time zone. Um, you can see here it's giving back current temperature in degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's current condition. It's raining right now as I'm recording this video. Um, so there's lots and lots of outputs that this API uh, is giving us. And if you want, you can even click show full response to see all the code that's giving that back. Um, we can go ahead and hide that. So one of the things you can do with your outputs is decide which you want to keep. So some of these you may want to use and some you may never want to use. Um, and so in that case, you can just delete them so you don't have to worry about them later when you're using this custom action. So I'm going to go ahead and remove a lot of these because um, I'm really just interested mostly in the temperature. Um, maybe we'll keep the current condition. That's sort of interesting. Um, and we'll go with uh, just those things, not too interested in the uh, barometric pressure or humidity or that kind of thing. So we'll go ahead and remove the rest of these inputs. So now we've just got these three. The next thing you can do with uh, with these outputs is you can actually customize the name. So instead of it being current.temp underscore C, I can give this a friendlier name like temperature in Celsius. And then I can uh, do that for uh, temperature in Fahrenheit as well. And uh, we can do current condition. OK, great. So now I've just got the outputs that I'm planning on using, and I've given them all a friendly name. So now I can save that custom action. OK. You can see I've got a screen set up here on my app where users can put in a postal code and then click a button to look up the weather. So we've got that custom action here. Now we're going to set up so that the postal code is using the data from the input here. And we're going to do that. So now it's looking up the weather, but we need to do something with the outputs. So I'm going to add another custom action. And in this case, I'm going to create a weather log record. So here I can go ahead and save the postal code as what was put into the input. And then here's where it gets exciting. For the temperature, I can use the magic text here. And you can see that weather lookup, the custom action that's right above this create weather log action, is an option here in the menu. So I can go to weather lookup, and then I can either add in the temperature in Celsius or the temperature in Fahrenheit. So I'm going to save the temperature in Fahrenheit here and click Done. And so now let's go ahead and give this a shot. So I'm going to run the preview now. And now I can enter a postal code and click look up weather. OK, now let's look in the database and see if we created our weather log record. So we can go in here, click to view our one record. And you can see that we put in the postal code, and it's given the temperature of 73 degrees, which is pretty cool. But let's say I want to actually show the users of my app what the temperature is. Well, you can do that too. So let's look down here. I've created a screen that has a list of cities. So in my database, I've got a cities collection that has a couple of records with the name of the city, and then, of course, the postal codes for those cities. And then I've got a current temperature property, which currently doesn't have anything in it. 
So on this new home screen here, I've got a list of cities and I'm going to add some actions here. So first we're going to start with our custom action of the weather lookup. And so here for the postal code, instead of using the text input, we're going to use the postal code of the current city in the list. Now we're going to add another action that's going to update the current city. And we're going to update its current temperature with what we got back from the weather lookup. So we'll save the temperature there. And now we're going to link to our city detail screen. So again, what's happening is when I click this, first it's going to look up the weather for that city. It's going to save the temperature into the city's current temperature property in the database. And it's going to link over into the city detail screen. And now I have this text here that just says current temp. And I'm going to use the magic text to add to that the current city's current temperature. Okay, let's run the preview and give it a shot. So now I can click on the city here. And you see that the current temperature right now is 61.9 degrees. So there you go. That's just a, an example of how you can use the outputs from your custom actions. So whether it's looking up some interesting data like weather or you're doing some geocoding or sentiment analysis, or even if you've got an API that runs some custom code and gives you back different data, um, or if you're using your custom action to create a record or do something in an external system like send an email, you can also use the outputs of custom actions to save back the ID of the record that got created. So all sorts of uses are now possible with custom action output.